YouTube, but welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my own tape and extensions. I do have a video that I did in the past. Uh, it was kind of like all over the place because it was my first time trying to film doing tape and extensions and it wasn't really planned. It was kind of like whim of, whim of the moment. Whim of the moment? Is that even a phrase? Whim of the moment? But anyway, um, it can be a little bit difficult trying to film yourself do tape and extensions, but I'm going to give it my best shot once again and kind of talk you through the through the process of how I do it, placement, all that fun stuff. I do recommend to get them done professionally, but for me, I've kind of just been getting them on and off professionally for the past couple of years. And recently I started trying to do them myself. I would add a few here just for like volume. I would add some in the back for volume. And then I started doing like a full head. So I'm kind of used to doing them. I've done them myself probably five times within the past year or so. So I'm pretty comfortable. If you're brand new, I do recommend, you know, trying to get them done professionally. But if you are someone that likes to DIY and you are comfortable, then I will be showing you how I do my own tape -ins. So I'm gonna be trying a new brand today and it is Goo Goo Hair Extensions. They did send this to me. I really love the little box that it came in. You can shop them on gooohair.com. And they gave me a code Tosh15 for 15% off your purchase, which I thought was really nice. This is in collaboration with Goo Goo Hair. So thank you Goo Goo Hair for sending these over. And I'm gonna give them a try. First things first, I guess, let's go ahead and open the box to show you what's inside. I did already open them, but just kind of like show you the contents. So it comes in this cute little box right here great for storage and then it has this nice little silk satin pouch which has the hair extensions inside. I do have two packs that they sent over just because I have fine thin hair but then also my hair is pretty like short and blunt. So if you have more of a shorter blunt cut you're going to need I would say about two packs easy one and a half to two sometimes more. My hair is fine and thin so I don't need too much but having two packs on average just really helps to blend everything better that way you don't have like this blunt cut in the back that is visible and kind of like a dead giveaway that you have extensions and you want them to blend as seamlessly as possible the color that i got is i think it's 17 yeah 17 22 60 and it's like this rooted blonde with highlights and then just goes into a full-blown platinum type of blonde my hair is a little bit more green i would say i have to kind of try i don't know if like a red toner or something but i'm noticing a bit more greens in my blonde whereas these are more of like a pinky blonde compared to my hair but once they're in and you like wash them all that stuff i'm amazed at how it's almost like hair extensions morph into your hair color it's really weird because i haven't changed my hair color at all and i've used two different sh tones of like hair extensions in the past several months and both of them matched really well it's almost weird it's like as if hair tape ins are like a chameleon i do like the color selection on Goo, Goo hair as well sometimes a brand doesn't really have that much of a color selection so it's hard to find the right color for your hair and what you'll end up having to do is going to a stylist to bring your hair extensions having them color match your hair to the extensions it's probably the best option but it's really nice when they do have a large selection and you can kind of like find something that already matches your hair. So this is actually going to be a pretty good match, although it looks like, you know, it is a little bit more pink and my hair is a little bit more green. But I promise you it'll all work out. So each pack has, I think, 50 grams, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check on the website. Yes, hair weight is 50 grams and I have the 18 inch right here. The way that tape ins work is essentially they have these tabs right here. There are some great videos on YouTube, but I'll kind of go through for the sake of this video how tape-ins work. This is basically one section of a tape-in. One side is going to have the side that's going to be visible from the front or underneath. You can see the hair color and then on the back side you have the actual tape covered by the tape backing, which you will peel off to reveal the sticky side of the tape. This is what holds to your natural hair. The way that I do them, because I'm doing them myself, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna take off the backing, you guys will see. I'm gonna place it a few centimeters away from the scalp, and then it's gonna stick to the hairs. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it, and because this side is sticky, it's gonna naturally pick up some hairs onto the tape. You wanna make sure that this part is clean as well, and then you go ahead and sandwich the other piece on top. 
it's like a brief overview I will show you guys up close as, as best as I can it's a little bit hard to have like a whole situation here so that I can show how I do my tape ends and then to remove them I use a solution that I bought off of Amazon it works great it has this little plastic nozzle and what you do is place that nozzle in between the sandwich of tapes squeeze some solution in there to help kind of loosen the glue when you squeeze that solution remover in between the tapes it makes the tapes lose its stickiness that way they're able to kind of slide right out if they're not ready apply some more remover and then keep applying it until all of it loses its stickiness and they can slide right out and you should have no damage if the you know tapes are pretty good quality and they don't get stuck in your hair any of that because i have short fine thin hair i'll probably be using one and a half to two packs and i usually like to start at the bottom and you do want to create a clean part like i said and when you create a part you want to create almost like a horseshoe shape around your the back of your head so starting at the nape you're going to kind of create a section of hair you want to leave some out at the bottom but you want to you want to create a section of hair like so and you want to make sure it kind of resembles like a U shape because you're not going to be placing the tapes in a straight line across. You're going to be starting out kind of tilting them in the front and then following a U shape and then going all the way around. And that's how that you do. You can do one row, two rows, three rows, four rows, you know, however many you think that you're going to need. You can watch my other video for reference or there's some great videos on YouTube, but that's kind of what I do. So let me actually visually show you guys what it is that I do because I feel like I'm a visual learner and it's just so much easier. So I'll try to show you guys as best as I can but I went ahead and made the first clean part and as you can tell it's in like a bit of a U shape and I left a bit more hair out this time because the last time I only did probably like half the amount of hair and then when I went to go pick up my hair in a ponytail like I don't usually do a high ponytail, but if you wanted to, you'll be able to see the tape in. So I'm, I'm going to leave a bit more hair this time just to be able to conceal them and have more hair to conceal that last layer. I usually do about four layers, I will say, meaning I'll do like one part, two, three, four parts. I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off of the tape portion to reveal the sticky side. With the sticky side facing your natural hair, you're going to want to place it as straight as possible and I'm going to start in the middle because I'm going to place it straight dab in the middle, two, on the, two more on the sides, that way everything kind of flows nicely but I have a mirror right here in front of me and then I have this large mirror behind me that way I'm able to see what I'm doing behind me otherwise it's very difficult to do this without like a two mirror double mirror situation but go ahead and place it I would say a few centimeters away from the root and just place it right there. You want to make sure the part is clean. There's no extra hair sticking out, nothing that's going to get in the way. But just go ahead and place it literally right there, smack dab in the middle. And press it down so that it sticks to the hair. And then go ahead and lift it up. And when you lift it up, it will naturally pick up some of your own hair with it because your own hair stuck to that tape and this part is very important as well you want to take a rat tail type comb and make sure that this part is very clean as well you don't want any extra hair that's kind of like zigzagging because it's going to snag it's not going to feel comfortable it's just very important to make sure that both parts on both sides of the sandwich are nice and clean. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clip that piece up. Now I'm gonna take the second part of the sandwich and take off the backing. And this one you're gonna place upside down. Make sure the sticky side is obviously facing your head, but hold it upside down like so and try to line it as best as you can on top of the previous sandwich that you have going on. Kind of like literally sandwiching them together. Go ahead and press the sandwiches together, give them a good old pinch, and just make sure that when you go back and forth, there's like no snagging. If you feel that it is way too tight, then you probably placed it a little bit too close to the scalp, so I recommend placing it a few centimeters farther. That way it just feels more comfortable. You don't want to place it too far out where it's like flopping all over the place, but you want to give it some space, you know? So that's piece number one. So 
I only did three in this bottom layer here just because I realized if I went too close to the ear I wouldn't really be able I mean even like now you might be able to see the tapes a little bit like this so I want to leave this space uh, you know free of any tapes I went ahead and did a second layer and for this one I think I'll do one two three four five four or five but I'm gonna do the exact same thing I'll show one more but essentially it's kind of like doing the same thing that I have been doing, so I don't want the video to be too long either. four rows of tape-ins. I'm all happy with the back, how it blends, all that good stuff. Now I just have to do the front because obviously as you can tell it's like a, almost as if the hair got chopped off but what I like to do in the front is because I don't really have a lot of hair in the front to begin with I will take a sandwich of tape-ins, like a tape-in sandwich and I'll actually cut it in half and I'll place one here and another there and that's kind of like enough for me to fill out the front without adding too many tape-ins and um, you know for it being too much just align them so that nice, they're nice and even and then just cut it down the middle like so so that you have uh, two sandwiches and then I like to place one kind of somewhere here and then another one there so I'll just make a clean part and you do want to angle it this way so it's kind of following that same U shape. You don't want to place it horizontally completely and then take the other side of the sandwich and place it right on top. So that's one. I'm gonna do another one here and then two here as well. Do you see how just those two pieces filled out the front so much but the color blends perfectly I would say but I have one two three four sandwiches left I have to take a break but I wanted to show you guys what it looks like straight this is what the back looks like I'd say it's a pretty good blend it looks a lot better when you curl it and I might trim it I feel like it might be a little bit too thin for my liking on the ends all right it is later in the day and I went ahead and actually trimmed them they were probably up to here so I trimmed them and then added kind of like a cascading type situation with the hair so that kind of like blends in it's not just like this piece here and then straight to long um, just like a few tweaks but I think the color match is absolutely perfect and I do prefer this length I will say that these feel a little bit almost a little bit thinner volume wise than previous ones that I've tried from Amazon the past two times I feel like I'm using the same amount of tapes but it just feels I don't know, maybe it's just because they're still silky and then once you wash them, they kind of like roughen up a bit. So, but right now I'm actually going to go ahead and curl them and I usually have them curled. I rarely leave them straight. Sometimes I'll leave them air dried, but for the most part, I'll kind of curl them and then touch them up a couple times throughout the week. Touch up the curls if I have any like wonky curls. So I have the T3 Twirl Trio right here, which I absolutely love and I've been using for quite some time now and it has the interchangeable barrels. Very good quality technology. You're saving space in a way because you're not buying three different curling irons. You just kind of like interchange the barrels. So this is the smallest one and then I'm going to use the largest one which is I believe one and a half inch and this one's great for creating like really loose curls which I actually really like when I have extensions in. Just pop it in, twirl this to lock it in, turn it on let it warm up. While it's warming up, I did want to mention when it comes to tape and extensions, you do want to take care of them. Don't wash your hair, I would say, for about 24 to 48 hours. So before you even apply tape-ins, I guess start off with fresh hair. That way you're not worried that your hair is already greasy and then you can't wash it for 24. They usually say that so that the tape can like really adhere to the hair and you're not wetting it too soon and then you do want to care for your hair extensions if you want them to last you know try to be very careful when it comes to using heat use heat protectants when you're sleeping I would recommend either putting it in a braid or a little ponytail that way they don't like tangle and mat up, mat up when you're sleeping so you do want to take care of it 
but I feel like this is already heated up. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a few curls to give it a bit of like a loose curl look. them out. The extensions when they're nice and fresh they feel so silky soft. They do kind of roughen up, roughen up a bit as you use them. So I'm interested to see how these are going to hold up. I will definitely update in the description box because it's hard to do a first impression so you kind of get a feel for them. I would say after washing them a few times and having them for a week or so, probably a few weeks I would say, so I'll definitely leave an update in the description box but I just love these loose curls using the T3 one and a half inch curling barrel and I'd say this is a very good quality curling iron like it's not it doesn't really damage the hair much obviously it's heat but I would say it's pretty good technology wise but yeah this is the end result I would say the color match is really 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 nice the hair feels nice and soft and very very silky it actually looks like my own natural hair like it blends so seamlessly. This is why I say with tape-ins, even though the color might seem like it's a little bit off, once you apply them, it's almost as if they're like chameleons and they just like blend with your hair. It's kind of crazy, but I don't know. So far, so good. Really happy with the outcome. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you to Goo Goo Hair once again for sending these and collaborating on today's video. I'll leave any links in the description box down below and I will try to update you guys within the next few weeks on how these are holding up. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and I'll see you guys in future videos.